In this six minute video, let's keep things simple and build an MMO with data stores. That's right, an MMO in six minutes. Seriously. Hey everyone, it's Andrew from Roblox. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Kat from Roblox. To build an MMO, Kat and I need to do three things. Give players something to do, save player progress, and handle player position. Kat, before we get started, can you walk us through what an MMO is? Sure. MMOs are massively multiplayer online games and have a few key characteristics. They have servers and clients, customizable avatars, chat, virtual economies, and persistence. MMOs are incredibly complex to develop, but Roblox offers those first three right out of the box. 200 players per server is at least kind of massive, so to create an MMO, we just need the last two. An economy, which starts with a currency, and persistence, so that a player's progress is automatically saved session after session, day after day. And gameplay, do we need gameplay? Okay, fine, yes, gameplay. We'll add some gameplay. To give players something to do, let's create an economy. Here, I've slapped together a cave in the Arctic. You venture into this cave, collect gold, and then come back and socialize on this very pleasant iceberg. There are three big components to collecting gold. Increment player gold as they collect it, show gold in the UI so that players know how much they have, and save gold to a data store. Let's run through these one by one. First, we loop through all parts with a gold tag and connect the touched event to an anonymous function. The function gets the part that touched the gold, which could be a hand, a foot, a shoulder, whatever, gets its parent, which should be a character, and finally gets the player from that character. If the code was able to get a player, awesome, we'll give them some gold. You can see here that when we award player gold, we use the player's user ID instead of the player object. There's a good reason for this that we'll talk about later. We also have a bit of debounce logic to catch situations in which multiple parts touch simultaneously, or close to simultaneously anyway. Next, let's update the UI. This is pretty simple, but UI changes occur on the client. We need a remote event so that the server can tell the client, hey, this player's gold has changed. The server fires the event, and a client script in Starter GUI listens for the event and updates the UI. And voila! You can now swim around and pick up gold. Before we go further, let's talk about what would happen if we stopped here. You can see in the code that we add player gold to a local table. And when I say local, I don't just mean a local variable, but a table that gets created when the script runs and only exists in server memory. To prevent the table from growing endlessly for the lifetime of the server, Every time a player leaves the experience, we need to remove their entry from the local table. So if a player ever disconnects, they lose all their gold. And after the server shuts down, everyone loses their gold. Not great. That's the problem data stores solve. That's what we mean by persistence. In most PC games, you save data to your disk. You can just go find the save files in your machine. In Roblox experiences, you save data to a data store, which acts a lot like a NoSQL key value store in the cloud. To work with data stores, you have to add the data store service to a script. Then, you have to get the data store in question with the getDataStore method. If the data store doesn't already exist, the data store service creates it, so you don't need any if logic here. It's super convenient. To set values for a key, use the setAsync method. You could imagine us having a data store named PlayerGold, a key of the player's user ID that we mentioned earlier, and a value of the amount of gold in the local table. Actually, that sounds good. Let's do that. Why use the player's user ID? Well, for one, it's unique to the player and keys have to be unique. The other reason is that data stores only support basic types like numbers, strings, booleans, and tables, so we can't store the player object itself. We'll set the value when players leave, that's the players.playerremoving event, and get it using get async when players join, that's players.playeradded. Let's test. I'll gather some gold, leave, reconnect, and I still have my gold, so far so good. But instead of spawning in the cave, you spawn back at the iceberg. An MMO should feel like a world that you inhabit. So let's use data stores to solve that problem too. Storing player position is a bit more complicated for two reasons. First, we're not dealing with players. Players don't exist in the world, we're dealing with characters. We can still use the player ID as our data store key, but we have to use the character removing and character added events. Second, we can't store objects, so we instead have to get x, y, and z coordinates from the character position and store those with set async. After the player reconnects, we again use get async and reassemble their position from those x, y, and z values. What about death? Well, uh, it's, it's an inevitability, so 
I guess I just try to find joy and beauty in the day-to-day -day and remember No, that... Andrew. I mean in the MMO. How do we handle position when the player dies? Oh, right, the game, yes. <laughs> we can add another function that finds the first spawn location, in our case, the only spawn location, and puts them there. So you can go for a quick swim, leave, and come back, and you're right back where you started. It all feels really seamless. Wow, we actually did it. We did it, not bad for 100 lines of code. Should we have a, I don't know, a vending machine where players can exchange their gold for items? Nope, I think I have a better idea. Oh? Two words, polar bear. <laughs> Kat, this has been so much fun. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so happy to be here. We only touched on the absolute basics of data stores today. Creating, reading, writing, and connecting to events. If you want to learn more about using data stores to save player data or build persistent worlds, including retry logic, versioning, limits, and best practices, check out the documentation at create.roblox.com. Thanks for watching. What about death? <laughs> what about death? <laughs>